MMA career. I know you got the boxing background, obviously, but uh, just what what led you kind of to get started in MMA? So let me try to, you know, compact whatever in a short amount of time to sink it. But, you know, I'm 43 now. I'm going to be 44 in June. So going back, I guess the biggest thing is I've been an athlete my whole life. I started playing sports. My dad, who raised us, put me in soccer when I was four. Um, and then I played when I was even in, you know, ninth grade, I was playing varsity softball. Like, I've always been a great athlete. I've always been a great athlete. So through my adolescence and junior high, I had universities looking at me when I was in, you know, eighth grade or mm-hmm. go, playing soccer to play for for them I mean I could have gotten a scholarship and I've done this you know talked about this a few times I could have gotten a scholarship for soccer for Stanford um I had a couple other universities looking at me I was I I really excelled Mm -hmm. I really excelled and knowing that when you're that age and how (laughs) fucking believe it because you're young and you're inexperienced and be that as it may um I always I will go back where it's like even through all the times that I did play sports I always had a like a lot of fighters Mm -hmm. I had an angle I had a chip on my shoulder I had a lot of unresolved bullshit and um that led later on into my life it caused a lot of fucking problems I went to five high schools in three different years for fighting. I grew up in LA. Um, I mean, so for people who watch this, it's like he's saying he's in, you know, Portland or whatever. It's Mm -hmm. like LA people usually know where that is. Orange County, another, I don't know, hour South of that. It's between, you know, San Diego and LA. Mm -hmm. And, um, I graduated early. So I think I took like my proficiency exam when I was 17, I'd kind of been on my own really since I was 15 or 16, a lot of problems with truancy, juvenile hall, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, fuck this. I'm not going to go to, you know, I'm not going to go to a college. Mm -hmm. So let me just, you know, thinking I'm an adult, live my life. So, and then I moved down here, 17, got my own place. Maybe a year after I put, started going to a JUCO, which is OCC, Orange Coast College, which is a really good juco and um what i wanted to do was transfer to cal state long beach to do kinesiology and i really didn't know what i wanted to do i just knew um i needed to i had to be productive i guess is the best way to say it so anyway back and forth with that so when i moved down here i ran into (laughs) I was going to bars at like 17 or 18 years old. We had fake IDs and we were like, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell. So I ended up running into the guy that was my future coach and we were at a bar. He knew some people that we knew. He's a few years older than me. We're still very close. Sean McCauley. And he goes, <laughs> and I'm watching him. Like I was fighting all the time. And I'm like watching this dude like fuck, dum, dum, dum. like oh my god. I'm like, I don't want to fight this motherfucker because he'll probably fucking hit me. Right. And then he buys me a beer and Sean's he's like, Okay, you think you're fucking tough? And I'm like, Yeah, I fucking I'm fucking tough. I'm like 19, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I go, Yeah, tough, right. I know my fucking way around. So he goes, show up at the fucking gym tomorrow. And I go, All right. <laughs> and I did. So for people who don't know, L.A. Boxing, which now is, you know, was franchised. It's actually the UFC gym now. So there was an original, the very first L.A. Boxing in Costa Mesa it was on Newport Beach in the 55. This is mid 90s, which I wasn't there. It was there late 90s, early 2000s, um, which boxing, of course, was fucking huge. But every fucking world champion came through that gym um people who know who really know mma probably like you and one of the other guys i did a podcast with uh, true fans like antonio noki came through Mm -hmm. there like every like 
everybody came through this fucking gym. And so be that as it may. And then he's like, okay, you think you're tough? You want to fight? And I'm like <laughs> thinking, I go, you know, and I'd already been, by the way, I'd already been doing jujitsu for a couple of years, ski jujitsu. Okay. Um, I think when I was 17 or 18, I was with um, Joe Morera. And then I was with Kleber Luciano a little bit after that. And then I got burned out. I was like, the fucking shit is stupid. <laughs> so I'm going to like, whatever, go work on my fucking. Mm-hmm. So then Sean's like, hey, did you ever think of fighting? And I am. I'm probably 20 at the time. And I go, um, well, yeah, you know, I fight every weekend. So mm-hmm. I can do this. So when I had my first fight, this is how, by the way, all of this transpired. And then he goes, okay, I'm going to get you a fight. This is like when Valley Tudo, if you like a lot of people yeah. now know that it's like for real. So I was on the first thing for like World Valley Tudo Extreme. This is when, if you wanted to see video on somebody, you had to order it from the back of Black Belt Magazine. Okay. You couldn't go online and be like, oh, I'm going to fucking find. You go to the magazine and be like, Okay, let's see if we can get this fucking VHS tape, right? So we think we're fucking dope, right? So we get that. And I remember distinctly like watching it on the fucking, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I can beat this bitch. Little do I know, because we don't know any of this, because there's no records running around and all yeah. this. Yeah, but three and oh or four and oh in MMA, which was my pro debut. But she was like fucking 40 and five in kickbox. <laughs> So do you know who Bob Schreiber is? It sounds familiar. So he was one of the first pride guys too back okay. in the day, but it was his wife. Okay. So I'm 20 and she's basically my age, right? Like mm-hmm. 38. And so I get there and I'm thinking they go, okay, we're going to get a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars is pretty rad because even nowadays people don't get a thousand dollars. twenty years. <laughs> so I'm like, whatever. So Sean was going to fight his brother. Justin McCauley was going to mm-hmm. fight Aaron was on the card. Gilbert Eibel was on the card. Like it was a pretty big fucking yeah. thing. And I'm like, I think I'm badass. I think. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm like, I see this fucking chick and I'm like, Sean, I'm like, I'm fucking <laughs> like, it's in Aruba, right? Mm-hmm. So we're in a Dutch Island. So it was basically the Dutchies, which is, you know, and, and verse a lot of Americans. Oh my God. So anyway, and then they tell us when we get there, you're fighting like one round. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. I can do that. Okay. One round, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. You're like, okay. <laughs> like what? Okay. Okay. And the men were fighting one 50, one 30 minute round. Mm-hmm. So we'll go back and she probably weighed more than me. I was probably 165. But I mean, the point is, is like, I knew nothing like I do now. I did probably more jujitsu like compared to her. She was a stand up, mm-hmm. right? And I was just like, there was no comparison. I wasn't going to beat her standing up. I'm like, just take her fucking down, yeah. <laughs> you know? But I mean, the point being is, so, so that's how that started. I ended up getting a draw. I loved it. It was one of the scariest things I ever did in my life because I walked in there. The, the, the cage is on the beach in Aruba. The whole week, because a lot of people knew Sean from kickboxing. He was a fucking, my coach was a great kickboxing champion. Um, but the Dutchies were like, because Aruba's a Dutch island. The Dutchies were like, this chick's going to fucking beat your ass. They'd walk by, <laughs> like, she's going to fucking beat your ass. Okay, like, obviously now, anyone who said that, I'd fucking beat their ass. Yeah. Even if, <laughs> like, no one could, would ever fucking talk to me like that. But when I'm a kid, I'm like, Sean, <laughs> what's fucking going on? What are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing? Aaron, Aaron, that motherfucker could <laughs> sell snow to fucking, you know, Eskimos. And I was like, <laughs> all right, we've trained. I can do this. Anyway, my point is I got to draw and, um, I, and it was very scary because it is scary going in there with fucking whatever. But when I came out of there, it was, and maybe as an athlete, I love competition, much different than playing on a sports team. But I went, I think that's when you kind of know, even if you win or lose, you just go. 
I could do this again. Mm-hmm. I want to do this again. And, um, and I did. And 20 years ago, we didn't know. Cause there wasn't, there wasn't people watching us on pay-per-view. Yeah. There wasn't people buying a fucking, okay, we're going to watch them. There, there wasn't movie deals. There wasn't modeling careers. There wasn't all of the things, which is great. And I love that athletes can parlay that stuff. It's like, we did it because we were fucking crazy <laughs> to fight. And I think the only thing I found out maybe two or three years later that it was like, you know, which is still a form now, MMA.TV, right? Which mm-hmm. is still, they were talking about, and I'm like, wow, I didn't know. I didn't know people were watching. I didn't fight because I thought people were watching. It was yeah. like, we just did it. So, mm-hmm. so when you talk about like all the people nowadays who want to be fighters, do you? <laughs> do you? And even if I'm not fighting now, I've been doing this 25 fucking years. I've seen, I know what it takes to fucking do what I'm doing. I was ranked number one at 55, number two at 45. I was signed to fucking strike force. I had like the sixth highest paying contract of strike force, men or women. I posted that on my fucking thing. My last fight was like 50 grand and 50 grand or something. And it was like, I was supposed to rematch Marla. So I was supposed to fight Cyborg. I would have fight Nunez back then. Mm. Like this is only two years ago. Yeah. I had a pain pill addiction. I had a injury and then it turned into a full blown pain pill addiction. And I had to retire because everyone's like, your Wikipedia says this and you're <laughs> that eight fight. Yeah. Cause I would have never passed a drug test. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm fucked up. And any of the fights that I had at the end of my career, I lost my last one in uh, 2011, a a very close decision. Like Mm -hmm. I was so fucked up. I had no business fighting, but it was like, I'd pulled out of so many fights before that. And I'm like, if I pull, so, you know, Shannon Knapp was fucking pissed because she was with Strikeforce, Bob Mm -hmm. Cook. All of them fucking spoke for me. Like back yeah. then I was in Vegas, with my husband, Neil Melanson at the time, the fucking badass. And um, we were training at Randy Couture's and he's, he knew everything. And he's like, Aaron, Aaron, you're not going to fucking do. I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he always had my back. I will say that. So that's why whatever with Neil, but um, a lot of them spoke for me, um, put their, you know, I fucked up my career. So it took me several years to be like, your circumstances were due to the choices that you made. Mm -hmm. And people get that. It's like, no one made me do whatever I did. No one made me take fucking painkillers. But so many people nowadays, so many athletes are so fucked up on that shit. Mm -hmm. And I can see, I've been clean off that for 10 years. And it's like, I know what I need. (laughs) Congratulations. It's like, I know when I meet somebody there because I can see it. Yeah. So um, anyway, <laughs> maybe like early 2000s, like MMA was not big because it wasn't for men or women. Yeah. Boxing was huge. Boxing was huge. The weight, cl- the, the talent and the weight class and everything in 2003, four, five, six for women's boxing crushes it mm-hmm. in terms of today if you look back at the weight classes and wolf layla ali yeah. becky frazier i fought that bitch too it was like <laughs> i was gonna fight fucking ann wolf we had a fucking six round fight people can look this up too i have a picture that i'll post sunshine Bedeker fought on that eliza olsen like if you know boxing mm-hmm. you know about i was getting ready to fight ann wolf Okay, in Cushada, like Mississippi or Tennessee or some shit. Mm -hmm. And literally 10 minutes before we're supposed to come out, the commission where I'm warming up and I'm who knows, she could have probably fucking there's there's very few women I was like and I use this term Lucy scared Mm -hmm. of. And Wolf was one of them. 
Do you know who she is? Yeah, she's a uh, yeah. I know. I know her. I'm not big into boxing, but yes, Ann Wolf is one of the best. <laughs> Fucking terrifying, right? <laughs> her and like Lucia Riker was the other one. Mm -hmm. I Scared of Layla. I wasn't scared of fucking Jack. I wasn't scared of him. But when I fucking saw Ann Wolf, I was like, bro. <laughs> but like, it's no joke. Like, this yeah. bitch is real, dude. And it's unfortunate because she never, Layla, Layla ran from her her whole career and they never fought. Um, but I was going to fight her. And then the commission came out literally 20 minutes before the fight as we're warming up and they go, she had a problem with her uh, and medicals and she can't fight and we didn't fight. Mm -hmm. But my point being is like, I fought fucking everybody. And I think it was a six round fight. Like I'm fighting a woman who's like a fucking man, like knocking women, like a dude, like yeah. knock. She was black chick, scary as fuck, dude. And I'm like, fuck it. I'll fight her. Yeah. I'll fight her. <laughs> And at least I know I stepped up to the plate because like it's something. And as much as I love Layla, um, Layla never did that. Um, Lucia Riker never did that. Like, fuck, man. Yeah. Fucking crazy. Sport. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And <laughs> so just, you know, looking at it, you know, from that scope, as you mentioned, how crazy boxing was at that time and MMA catching up nowadays, yeah. like having seen yeah. the evolution of it grow like what are your just general thoughts on i guess the speed of it like is it has it grown as quickly as you would have yeah. thought yeah i love it i mean what it was like 2005 it was gonna go bankrupt right mm -hmm. so when um bonner and forrest griffin fought yep. and they had that fucking fight and everyone was like oh <laughs> so we always liked, I had been watching like the UFC, like when Gerard Bordeaux fought, like all these people, like crazy, 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 crazy. When I was 15 or 16 years old, I didn't you think I knew anything. I just knew I was like, oh, that's fucking rad. Like <laughs> I, rad. no one knew that it was going to evolve into what it did. Number one. And then I think when it was going to go bankrupt, when Dana or whomever for Tita's, we're going to sell it in 2005 because it was ready to go mm -hmm. like the contender series or whatever they did got such a fucking like people loved it so much so then the commission the state commission came in which was only for boxing they didn't even look at mma as a sport they mm -hmm. laughed at years there's some of them that still do but boxers like i'll tell you and i train with and one of my coaches buddy mcgur like real like <laughs> top of the fucking international hall of fame type yeah. of people they think we're crazy <laughs> even though i do boxing too they're like y'all yeah. motherfuckers are fucking crazy <laughs> doing fucking kicks and fucking slams yeah. and all elbows and knees. like commission came in for whatever reason but they also knew that they could make money off it at the commission is a fucking racket they charge people when you do a belt and you like people don't understand this for boxing because it's so different than MMA. There's, you know, the five main sanctioning belts. Every time you fight for a said belt, you have to pay a sanctioning fee. You have to pay that. Like boxing is shitty on that level, mm -hmm. but which is why a lot of the boxers today aren't fighting each other. Cause there were different promotions, different yeah. this. why people love Dana because he signed 300 people and then he forces them to fight each other. Yeah you know yeah very big difference in that regard and yeah i'm um, not getting to see the the best guys fight so but, uh why well, i mean i just read last week where it's like terrence crawford and errol spence aren't gonna fight like are you kidding? <laughs> so yeah i've even heard about that for a while and I don't, crazy I don't follow like, boxing but <laughs> with PC and and crawford is with top rank like this is fucked mm -hmm. this is like We'll pay the fucking money. It's like, why do you think bo boxing is definitely not dying, but it, women's boxing is? No one gives a fuck because there's no one fucking fighting. No one cares. No one cares. All the women. So tangent, digressing. I love <laughs> them because I remember everything. 
The evolution is amazing. I love seeing women getting involved in the sport. I love seeing all these champions. I love, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Amanda Nunez. Mm -hmm. I love her. I love watching like the evolution and they've done a great job. Box women's boxing is shit though. But. <laughs> yeah going in the, the wrong direction right? so, okay. but i mean aaron as for you like did you uh ever like consider an mma comeback i know you boxed two years ago but like mma fight yes i want to fight kayla harrison all right there we go <laughs> i've called out seven fucking times i follow her on her fucking instagram i messaged her the other day <laughs> All due respect, I like she's ne she is not disrespectful. Number one, mm -hmm. so it, I I love talking shit. I can fucking really talk shit. <laughs> she's never been. I've called her out. She's never been disrespectful. I don't feel the need to because I think that's classless. Mm -hmm. I mean, to fucking create something that doesn't exist. Yeah, I have yeah. total respect for her. She's a fucking legitimate athlete, but. PFL is fucking shit. And they're giving her, which is fine. They're padding her fucking record. Mm. But like this next girl is like, was a fucking 125 pound champ. So I wrote on like when MMA weekly or whatever. And I fucking tagged her and I go, bro, come on. <laughs> like I'm old, right? I'm some fucking old ass bitch at fucking 40. If you can beat me, okay. Yeah. I can beat her. I can beat her. I can knock her out. I'm like fucking 180 right now. So, okay. You want to fight me at 55? I'm not going to make 45. I cannot. I'm too old to do that. I've done it before. It's no, but I will fight you and I will knock you out. And I can. Yeah. Do and I want to do it with her? I, no, but this isn't judo. This is <laughs> right, right. It's like, well, I, don't care. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, uh, no, I'm one of the best that ever was now and then in fucking MMA. I don't give a shit if I'm not fighting. I was supposed to fight two years ago on that Chuck and Tito Golden Boy undercard. OK, OK. I hadn't had an MMA fight for eight years and fucking eight girls turned it down. <laughs> OK. I know. And I train every day with the body shop. Antonio McKee, his fucking kid, AJ McKee fucking all the dudes that train there like you want to talk about a murderer's fucking row yeah okay and you know like i've never stopped training i train because of my state of mind i need it because it's good for people like us like we need something mm. I, do i think she's an easy fight of course not but do i think it's a fight i can win and i can knock her the fuck out fuck yeah <laughs> And she don't want this smoke. I message her fucking manager that is zeal, whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> like Antonio McKee, who fucking runs for me. Like, he's like, Aaron, fuck. Jason Manley, who would be my fucking like ground cook. Like, they know. Yeah. <laughs> fucking no. I never said it was the best in boxing. I fought the best, but I am one of the best that ever was in fucking MMA. And I know that. And if I suck, if somebody was calling me out the way that I call her out, I'd be like, <laughs> fucking. I mean, I just met her on her page the other day and I go, huh? Can we fight? Does she respond to you? No. <laughs> she was very respectful on the three months before that when I called her out and she goes, just have your manager call my manager and we'll figure it out. All right. She's being diplomatic. She's not going to talk shit to me. Yeah. And she doesn't have, that's not really her style. And I do respect that. Like, and if she, if she gets fucking dumb with me, okay, then I'll get stupid. But <laughs> I keep back full because she's respectful and she's a fucking Olympian. She's mm -hmm. a great athlete. Fucking respect her. But I don't respect her level of fuck competition in MMA. And I did say that on a fucking post. And I go, your legacy is in fucking important. I go, and everyone's looking and you think you're fucking eight no or whatever. And you're fighting fucking nobodies. I go, fucking fight me. If I'm so fucking easy and I'm old and you can kick my ass, fucking murk me. Yeah. Start <laughs> Great point. I Drake, I know what I can do. Like, that's fine.
Yeah. Yeah, no. And I mean, <laughs> in terms of like, you know, star power, though, and a name and the experience, all you have, not a bad addition to have in yeah. you know, their tournament style and all that, which I have is- like in regular life, like I don't have like star power or fuck in this. Like I didn't pad my fucking like, I guess if I could be doing stupid fucking shit, I could have 100,000 fucking followers. <laughs> Body hell. Like, I don't care. What I do know is I've been in the sport many, many years. My peers respect me. They all fucking admire, like they respect me. That's the biggest thing. So I'd rather, I made a post the other day. I'd rather have 5,000 followers and all my peers and community respect me than a hundred thousand followers and people fucking. Yeah. I don't care about followers and views. I know what I can do. Sure. I could buy some, whatever, but it's like, <laughs> whatever i don't give a shit yeah. you know and then that I, I, I always think about that if i bought followers that would always be in the back of my mind you know <laughs> sure and i get that i don't i'm not saying i have an aversion to that i'm saying the 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 discrepancy the p, the problem is because people have viewers right. it equals skills or equals respect yeah no it doesn't it does not so you know yeah yeah, totally. That's yeah. All. yeah, very, very fair to say that for sure. And yeah, very interesting. I well, I hopefully PFL will uh, change their tune maybe and hit you up. For the, <laughs> if somebody drops out, who knows what can happen, yeah, right? Yeah. We'll it's see. Even like Ray, Ray knows me and it's like, I used to train with him when I lived in Vegas with my ex-husband. It's like, I fucking everybody knows me. Everyone yeah. knows me. Not in a, that type of way. It You're just right, means right. I've been around. <laughs> I fought the best I'm here. And it's like, um, if I suck so bad, then fucking beat my ass. Prove it. Prove I suck. Yeah. (laughs) The easiest. Yeah. Easiest counter to that. Uh, So I would take, look, if someone was calling me out the way that I've been calling her out, it'd be like, let's fucking go. (laughs) It'd be done the same day. (laughs) (laughs) The, the kind of the moment is there a moment for you or in in or out of a fight that you look back on most fondly i mean marla's victory in hindsight that's an awesome one you know beating her but in or out of the of a fight anything that you kind of look back on most fondly i think and that's a really nice a good question i think <clears throat> and i didn't really realize this until a few years later how significant this was I'm, st- I'm a world title challenger. If you really know boxing, which you said, you're kind of like, whatever. Yeah. When you're a world title challenger in boxing, which is what I challenged Leila Ali for the WBC. And I think it was the IB. Oh, we had another a very prestigious belt. Like I was six, one and one when I fought her. I think she was 22 and now my point being is that all my, whatever I did up to that point, it was like, I fought the best to like fight her because I fucking hated her. We hated each other. Now, win or lose, when somebody is a world title challenger, that is a fucking significant accomplishment. And a lot of people don't understand that because boxing is much different than MMA. If you're a two-time world challenger, which I have not been, I've had the opportunity to, um, the fight was not, they didn't fucking pay me shit. Like at least (laughs) somewhat, I didn't get paid a lot for to fight Ollie, but I got paid a decent amount. That's a big thing, you know, and it's something I'm very proud of. The other thing I'm very proud of. And again, at the time when this is happening, I didn't realize the significance, maybe several years later, I'm still the only woman, not Holly Holm, not fucking Clarissa. I'm still the only woman to be ranked in the top five top five actually probably top three in both sports at the same time mma and boxing okay Mm -hmm. there's no other now clarissa who i'm cool with as well you know who clarissa shields is right she's she's in the pfl now right she got signed okay i challenged her because i know her manager clarissa and i are cool and we used to follow each other before my other account got fucking deleted but it's like she's never talked shit to me she likes to talk shit (laughs) <laughs> but it's like she 
talk shit to me. I don't have a reason to fucking talk shit to her. I know her manager very well, Mark Taffet. So I fought for one of their cards before a year ago in Detroit. And I messaged him and I said, let me welcome her. I'll fight her in boxing. I'll fight her in boxing. She could beat me. I don't give a shit. She won't knock me out. But it's like, let me fight her. And because MMA is so fucking easy, right? right. Like all these people. <laughs> fuck. But same MMA people that want to go to boxing, the boxing people talk shit. You can't fucking. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to knock me out in MMA. You're not because you got pillow hands. It's like, I get it. But I will knock you out in fucking MMA. She knows that it's not talking shit because if they think I'm talking shit, they can fucking sign a fucking fight, <laughs> sign on the fucking dotted line. I will fucking murk anyone. I don't care my age. I don't fucking care. anyone. So they know for PFL, that's also a fight that they don't want. I'm yeah, both. some good points there. And I mean, it... very valid. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. <Very valid. laughs> And I mean, I have the statistics and data to back it up. Right. right? Yes. <laughs> Scientific <laughs> facts. <laughs> it's science. It's science. Yeah. Oh, hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, we'll see you next time.